Some call it the beast. To others, it's the train of death. But to all these illegal migrants, it's a free ride bound for their American dream of washing dishes, picking lettuce, or carrying bricks. If we work under the sun and all that thing, over there, no, if, you, if, you, if you're born over there, your life is gonna be different. You're gonna work in the office, go to a nice high school, go to a nice college, you know? But I don't think we're stealing their money or their jobs, you know? Like Elvin, most aboard are from Central American countries like Guatemala and Honduras. They'll spend days clinging to cargo trains as they grind through southern Mexico up toward the U.S. border. Human rights groups estimate thousands have died falling from trains like this, some of them mutilated under its wheels. In route to the U.S. border, many more have been robbed, raped and kidnapped. The Mexican authorities do little to prevent them riding or to deter gangs from preying on them. So when I caught up with this group of migrants at a free hostel in southern Mexico, I wondered why they were ready to sacrifice so much. The American dream is, is really, is, it's a really American dream, because you can make money and live better. Help your people over here. Elvin once worked in the US before being jailed on a drug and drunk driving charge and later deported. And I want to do the things right this time, and I don't want to get in trouble again. Yeah, we're trying to. I'm not, I don't think I'm a bad person, I just like to drink sometimes, make mistakes like every single person in the world, you know. A card game to kill the hours before the train pulls out. Antonio has also lived in the States. In the US he can earn more in a day than in a whole week back home. He proudly tells me he was employee of the year at an Applebee's restaurant in Michigan. They put up a plaque in the lobby. There was only one Hispanic name up there, and it was mine. Greville from Honduras is a first-timer. He's traveling alone, but makes new friends with witty raps about his tough upbringing. I've heard people saying nice things about America, like it's another world. So I want to see for myself and try my luck. By next morning, hope has become apprehension as they wait by the tracks. Some smoke a marijuana joint to calm their nerves. Elvin's stony-faced, and Greville has just seen the beast for the first time. He says he's frightened to jump on the train. I scramble onto the train. I tie myself on for safety. I got off at an unscheduled stop a few hours later. Bye, bye. But I heard the train arrived without incident in the town of Ixtepec. It's been a tough 12-hour ride to get here, but the migrants still face as many more days of travel to get to the US border. A few nights later, another group of migrants who boarded the train of death were not so lucky. The train pulled out around midnight, when I caught up with it at first light, there was clearly something wrong. Only a handful of people were still aboard. As they straggled into this migrant hostel in Ixtepec, they claimed about 60 federal police and a heavily armed civilian gang had held up the train. They began pulling people off the train and they fired two shots. We ran to escape, but they grabbed a lot of people. The migrants believe as many as a hundred of their fellow travelers were kidnapped, including this man's sister. I thought this is as far as I go. I thought that this was the end. I was thinking about how to escape because I didn't know whether they were police or kidnappers. As they rest after their scare, we check what might have happened. The Immigration Department of Federal Police said there had been no official operation or arrests. 
A week later, hostel workers told me the detained migrants had been robbed but were freed after human rights workers lodged formal complaints. Fernando Batista, a senior government human rights official, was visiting the hostel. He says corrupt Mexican authorities frequently conspire with kidnapped gangs. The migrants are extremely vulnerable, and there are cases where federal and local authorities, far from doing their job of preventing crime, are colluding with those people committing those crimes. Father Alejandro Solalinde has been giving migrants a free meal and a bed at this hostel for the last five years. Bitter experience tells him they will press on despite the risks rather than go home to poverty. Yo observo a los migrantes esa esa ese éxodo interminable. This is an interminable exodus. It never ends. But I'm sure they're going to make history. They're going to rebuild America. But before they make that history or achieve their own more modest dreams, these poor migrants must first survive the train of death. Carl Penhall, CNN, in southern Mexico.